Would you like to win either the 5,000 or 10,000 meter track and field events at the Olympic Games? If you are a 15 year old runner and have the same physical and mental qualifications as this athlete, you can even hope to win both distances after eight years, if everything goes well. However, before the Olympic final, you must run 25,000 miles. And when you finally stand at the starting line, you must realize that all your fellow competitors have prepared themselves just like you, and only one of you can win. You also know that during those years of training, thousands of athletes have had the same ambitious goal, to run in the finals of the Olympic Games. After your training has produced some good results, you may receive financial help from your local and national sports organizations, be invited to national and even international competitions, and more. But running is a lonely, individual sport. You give everything you have and more. Nobody can run a single yard for you. Even though you may at times feel that you cannot take another step, you must go on. And when you finally reach your goal and get your quickly passing moment of glory, you know that you have paid a dear price for your laurel crown. You soon discover that your success brings with it the pressure of ever-growing responsibilities. It also wakes up those who want to deny the value of your achievements. You cannot defend yourself against those who want to discredit you. You can only advise them to run also. You will learn that what the press says means nothing. You cannot let what they say guide you. You are alone against the clock. Only results have meaning. You must work hard if you are to succeed. Not only because training alone will produce results, but because you have learned to love running. Most recent in a long line of famous Finnish runners, Las Siviren won the 5,000 and 10,000 meter events at both the 1972 and 1976 Olympic Games. In Munich, he was a surprise winner to the world at large. In Montreal, only few believed in his chances, and his accomplishments seemed to exceed the level of international expectation. Las Viren reached his goals because he clearly knew what he wanted. The pursuit of records and victories of secondary importance was rejected at the very beginning because their price would have probably been too high. According to experts, La Severin's career between Munich and Montreal was full of puzzling performances without great victories and records. Unexpected, though, was a strange turn of fate for Lasse in 1976. In December, the sports writers predictably selected Viren as Finland's best track athlete. Surprisingly, he received his trophy with his leg in a cast. His left ankle had been operated on after an injury while moose hunting near his home in Myskela. That hunting trip was the beginning of chronic, partially mysterious ailments which prevented full-scale training and later in the autumn of 1978 prevented participation in the European Championships in Prague, Czechoslovakia. 1978 was a most difficult year for La Severin. La Severin prepares himself for his third Olympic Games with the help of enormous personal experience. Success has given him confidence. All goes on as before. Discipline, sacrifice, willpower. As he strives toward yet another goal. This time his personal life is entirely different. His family plays a part in his training. Lassie and Pavy Viren were married during the summer of 76, shortly before Montreal.
During the beginning of the following summer, a son, Thomas Arturi Viren, was born into the family. One of the strongest attractions for the world-class athlete is the opportunity to travel and widen one's horizon. When an athlete is on top, then establishes a family, the whole thing turns upside down. Training trips to a faraway summer, forced by cold and slippery conditions at home in Finland during the winter, may strain the family situation to the extreme. When Lasse trained toward his goal to become an Olympic champion, he more than once took extended leaves of absence from work without salary. Of course, this meant that he accumulated less active service years than he otherwise would have, and his immediate earning power suffered dramatically. Still, being separated from your family is the most painful sacrifice you pay for running. Thousands of kilometers put extra stress on your feet during the weeks and months of training, but the stress on your psychological well-being is also extended beyond normal limits. On the phone, your son could only weep uncontrollably his longing for daddy. What you don't know is that the crying continued long after your phone conversation ended. You are so hopelessly alone. Training at home is different. Even if traveling to competitions interrupts family life, Lassi can spend lots of time with his wife and son. Thomas is growing fast, and he already knows that it is best to talk about things with Daddy. He doesn't know yet what his father has accomplished already before his birth. However, a child can sense many things. The admiration shown by visitors toward his father fits in well with his sense of values. Dad is the best in the world anyway, but all too often he is away. Lasse Viren wants to stay in his original surroundings, in his beautiful Finland, and especially Merskula. This is without doubt one of his most important sources of energy. Although many personal relationships have weakened because of his schedule, here and only here people treat him as a normal person. Here he can be himself. All of Finland has shared Lassi's victories with him. It has strewn his parents with flowers during Munich and his mother during Montreal when his father was gone. It has consumed gallons of coffee, flown flags, and received him with full honors back home. After this great success, he could get away from the pandemonium only when with his own people. Anyone who travels with him notices how genuinely he enjoys his own home turf and the company of his own people. Small talk during a coffee break can take this man so completely that old enemy, Father Time, doesn't seem to exist. He can forget that other world, demanding, ruthless, insisting. During the year 1979, foundation is laid for the rigors of the Moscow Olympics. The last two and a half years of training, which have been less than fully effective due to injuries, necessitate starting the build-up from a lower level than expected. On April 22nd, at Lame in Hame, a province in Finland, Lassi Viren is getting ready for his eight-mile leg in the Palma Road relay. His club, Merskilin Merski, doesn't have much of a chance of placing among the top teams. Yet, for Viren, this is an important race. Preparation for this race is unusual. Electrodes are attached to his chest. Hooked to a radio transmitter, information about his heart is fed directly to a research vehicle which follows Viren during his leg in the relay. The purpose of this medical study is to determine whether or not there was value in the heavy high-altitude training in Bogota, Colombia. 
competition is much more suitable for this than a training session because it monitors actual race conditions. Track and field in Finland starts to stir early in the spring when nature begins to awaken from the long, cold winter. Spring is the time of big road races. It is not warm enough to compete on the track. Often the spring cross-country races take place in biting wind and sometimes even in heavy snow flurries. One of the more famous of these races is the traditional Kaivopuisto Marathon in Helsinki. Lasse Viren won this 15-mile race in 1971 and again in 1976. A common cold forces him to become a spectator during the 1979 event. Viren has a particularly good reason to regard this situation seriously because his sinuses become easily inflamed. Just before the Montreal Games, he had to agree to have his sinuses punctured. This strength sapping treatment is the only possibility when heavy training will tolerate no form of medication. Summer begins in earnest now during the inauguration games of Miramaki track near Helsinki. It is the beginning of guesswork, good and bad omens, hope, faith, and doubts for the Finnish track and field crowd. Not everybody accepts Viren's seemingly insufficient performances. There are serious questions about the duties of an athlete toward his public. There is a demand for records and the merry-go-round of hard races. We know that the sport needs top athletes. Only they can bring about popularity and attract the masses who aspire to become great. Who would have been able to count all the young, middle, and old age runners striving to become like Viren? Inspired, they kept on running up and down the roads, streets, and sawdust tracks during the 70s. Every summer, there are many magnificent track and field meets for school children all over Finland. Those who attend fall in love with the sport and remember that inspiration comes from great past achievements and anticipation of future goals. There is only one thing, however, that causes alarm. Why so often, so soon, the unnecessary public seriousness begins to push runners prematurely to their limits. The love of good competition, discipline, and self-realization are valuable goals in themselves. A 12-year-old kid doesn't need a national championship. During his long training periods, Lasse Virin lets nothing interfere with his training. Publicity and eager fans cannot break his concentration. The Finnish public has learned not to expect much from Lasse during these less important competitions. The development of the top athlete has further emphasized the value of the Olympic Games and appreciation of Olympic winners. Lasse Viren is a child of the Olympic ideology. During the last two years before Moscow, suspense overcomes the Viren crowd. People begin looking for indicators of possible success. But little by little, he begins to keep up with the other runners and his fans begin to wait for signs of Lasse's famous finishing kick. In August 1979, Viren's ability to sustain a super kick at the end of a hard race was seen for the first time in many months. During the autumn in Brussels, he ran a 28.04 10,000-meter race in almost total secrecy. This was better than during the corresponding time before Munich or Montreal. The secure feeling of hope has come to stay, and the autumn leaves display a vibrant golden color. Late autumn is the declaration of the running ideology. Lassie's jog at home in Merskela attracts an ever-growing number of participants each year. Interest in this event is developing even in faraway countries, and the fourth year of this competition has a total of 1,481 runners. 
Here you see Lassie Viren capturing his third win. A new training season begins in October 1979. Final goals for Moscow must be decided here and now. The third double sounds inviting, and the same holds for the marathon. But the marathon can be run with 5,000 and 10,000 meter training. You know that with every year you must dig in deeper for that last lap overdrive. Are you sure you'll find it at all? No, but you must though it is now harder than ever to accomplish. Do you know now what you will run? Yes. You decide to go for the marathon and 10,000 meters. The earlier training with a new emphasis, that's what you want. The long road is in front once again, clear and beautiful it beckons. The forest is the source of power for La Severin. During training runs, it gives shelter from the icy winter wind, and during the summer, the trees throw a cool shadow. When the sun and trees line the road with a zebra pattern, the scene presents a new dimension, and Lassie moves like a pulsing laser beam. The call of the forest is new during the fall. While hunting moose, one momentarily forgets everything else. There is only the company of friends and the lonely suspense. After nearly every hunt, there is a get-together around the ritualistic log fire. Nothing, yet everything is important. In December, nothing but running. An unbelievably strong desire for working hard dispels the last of the doubts that filled your head about Moscow. Now you can afford to admit that the fire seemed to have almost gone out and that you were tempted to give it all up. You waited for Christmas with mixed feelings because you knew it would be interrupted with your trip to Brazil. Now when you know that you are irrevocably committed to Moscow, you are somehow outside of everything. Part of you is alone, even when you are with your family. On St. Stephen's Day evening, your thoughts are no longer here. Not really, anyway. Everything is already gone, and you move like in a dream. Thoughts become entangled, discomfort, loneliness you notice all of a sudden that the words remain as thoughts and you are already on your way to some faraway place. The 1972 training program for Munich was rewritten and fortified for the 1976 games in Montreal. A similar program has been prepared for the 1980 games in Moscow. The best way to end the slipping and sliding of Finland's icy roads is to run for six weeks in Brazil, three times a day. Six weeks is a long time when thought of in anticipation. Sometimes one can't help wondering about the concept of time. Why does it go so slowly here when thinking of your family and so quickly when thinking of Moscow? Time is a friend, however, when everything goes well. Can't let this pal get away now. Racing in Puerto Rico during the beginning of February, you follow the heels of Myris Yifter, and that's okay. Your time is better than four years ago, and the future looks promising. The Olympic spring has already started its battle against the shackles of winter. There is more light each day, at least as far as nature is concerned. Otherwise, a great shadow looms over the Olympics. Politics enters the sports scene, an Olympic boycott. 
Lasse wonders if any good would be served by refusing to meet his friends from all over the world on the running track in Moscow. You wonder how many must take part in politics by not participating in the Moscow Olympics. Your plans do not change. One more time you give it everything you've got, and that means everything, your body and soul, mornings, days, evenings, even nights. What are you doing now? You gather strength so that you'll be able to go through everything required of a champion, pain, agony, hope, victory. Nothing can beat this incessive effort. <laughs> One of the advantages of training at home is a certain skillful masseur who often comes into Lassie's mind during training runs. A proper massage stimulates circulation and cell metabolism and thus speeds up the removal of waste products from the muscles. Elmer Yukala has studied and softened up the muscles of his friend Lassie Viren for 13 years. On five occasions, about half an hour before the Olympic final, this man has gently rubbed away the slight feeling of tiredness in Lassie's muscles brought about by the demanding warm-up leaving him feeling fresh and ready to run a good race. Here again, time must stop for a moment and wait. At the beginning of December 1979, Lasse Viren left his job with the police department and became employed by the Union Bank of Finland. His primary duty is to lead a project called For the Best of Track and Field in Finland. At the same time, he might as well improve the physical fitness of the bank employees. The evening sun during a business trip to Mikkeli reminds Lasse, we'll meet at the airport. He is about to begin perhaps his last training trip, this time to Bogota, Colombia. At home, his son is down with a high fever. It feels so bad to pack again. March 29th and New York Central Park. Las Severin wins a 10 kilometer park run in record time. Most top US runners are also in the race. Now in Bogota, Lassi trains seriously toward his goal, Moscow. During his three times a day training sessions, he has no time for social activity. On alternate days, however, he can use his mornings and afternoons as he wishes. During this time, he needs a leisure program. He knows that inactivity can easily destroy his morale. This need has been anticipated. Here he spends leisure time with Finnish friends who are living temporarily in this Central American city. Of course it is nice to feel at home. The saunas and evenings together, less exotic food, weekend trips, and expert guidance are entirely different than being alone in strange surroundings. Competition here is also part of his training because it is conducive to an all-out effort. Less than two weeks after his New York victory, La Severin overwhelmingly wins a nine-mile street race in San Andreas against the best runners in Colombia and Central America. Viren's normal training altitude at Bogota is about 8,700 feet above sea level. Here he is running at 10,000 feet. At first there is a stinging pain in his chest, but after working up a good sweat, running is surprisingly easy. You have grown accustomed to training because it has for so long been an essential part of your life. You accept and don't want to talk much about it. Like a feline beast, you do with springy stride that which must be done, and again you are ready for stretching, play, and that wonderful, relaxed, carefree movement. 
On the way home, Lassie meets a formidable group of top runners in New Jersey and is runner-up behind Herb Lindsay. Upon arrival in Helsinki, he must go directly from the airport to Melati Central Hospital for medical tests. The results from these tests are important now for Lassie Viren's training and later for several other top Finnish runners. Only five days after returning from Colombia, when the Bogota night has a tendency to fall in the middle of a spring day at home, Lassie Viren makes preparations in Perola for the Finnish cross-country championships. The weather feels uncomfortably cool. Baivi was correct in pushing him to wear tights. It's snowing here. The top three runners take their post from the very beginning and set the pace. Soft track and cold wind take their toll. Carlo Maninka seems to be heading for his best season ever. He captures his third victory with ease. La Severin's full speed training run brings third place and the coldness forces him to a hot shower so fast that he must pass up the victory ceremonies. May 16th, you are running at home. The spring oxygen is flowing through your veins. This is nice. Your eyes caress what they see. You've come a long way, and soon... Was that a snake? One important point in the long-range training plan is the knowledge of results at any particular moment. The runner's coach, of course, follows the results of a variety of tests to give reliable information which is then compared with data from earlier years. Pine cones are swept aside from the footpath. A hard workout is planned. 250 meter intervals run 10 times at full speed will be done back to back with jogging for recovery. 5,000 meters altogether. At the end of this training, the heart should indicate the runner's condition. Running requires much oxygen. The oxygen is carried to the muscle cell tissues by red corpuscles in the blood, which is circulated by the heart, a strong pumping muscle. At 190 beats per minute, four large bucketfuls of blood pass through it. Here, Lassie's heart reaches only 172 beats per minute. Hard training in Bogota has tightened Lassie's leg muscles so that he cannot run hard enough to raise his pulse rate to a sufficiently high level. You don't talk much, but you know what's coming. A long distance runner needs endurance more than anything else. However, he also needs the ability to shift gears at a moment's notice. One must condition his muscles to perform when required in two different ways, pace and speed. When the runner moves his body along at a steady hard pace for an extended period of time, the muscles burn their own energy supplies slowly with the intake of oxygen, so that there are no harmful residues. The purpose of training is to raise the energy saving aerobic running speed as high as possible. As the runner increases his speed, the muscles contract more rapidly and consume energy at a faster rate. The consequence of increased speed is that the combustion of energy forming elements is incomplete due to the insufficient oxygen. The result is a residue, lactic acid, which hinders the metabolism of the muscle cells. In this anaerobic running, the intake of oxygen alone is insufficient. Therefore, muscles must turn to their own energy supplies. 
When this energy is all used up and the cells are saturated with lactic acid, the runner's muscles fatigue, become stiff and sore, and finally cease to function. A final kick started too early will also end too early. about by repeated fast-paced running. Many repeated sprints during these interval training sessions and the muscles adapt to the task. At the same time, they develop a tolerance to more and more lactic acid. The main objective of these races is to test one's condition for fast pacing and also speed. Slowly the system adjusts to violent exertions. When needed, the runner will be able to shift into overdrive and stay there without collapsing for a sufficiently long period of time. Every runner must know how far he can push himself. This is the kind of training which the public can see during the early summer competitions when runners are participating at their under-distance events. For a runner, these competitions offer good opportunity for a superhuman effort at a time when he is not yet at peak condition. On the track, in front of spectators, the runner tries to stay with the rest of the pack and pushes himself to a performance he is not capable of in the forest. When you are eyewitnessing a final stretch battle for the finish line, keep in mind that all the runners are carrying with them pain, all-encompassing agony, uncertainty, and foggy consciousness, part of which is resisting maximum effort. Only the knowledge that it will soon be over gives these runners strength to finish the race. Lassiveren accomplishes his best ever early season performance during his 3,000 meter race at the Olympic Stadium in Helsinki. His muscles were tight and stiff, but a warm down and massage seemed to take care of the problem. During the 15,000 meter race in Karya, you get the feeling which will be present in every competition all the way to the Olympics. At a compulsory association games in Tampere, as well as at Cannes and Miramaki, spectators follow your run with thousands of eyes, yell your name and spur you on until, in a few moments, the race is over. Even the sounds of the public cannot hide the deep silence of this disappointment. Soon after the race, people depart in uncertainty about your condition, and you can feel their apprehension and doubt about your chances for new Olympic victories. On June 11th, there is a training session and test run at the Olympic Stadium. Viren's good mood can accept even the tight feeling in his right thigh. The coach stretches and bends his thigh, but the tightness remains.
It happened the following night in Vamala during a 1,500-meter run. A bag of ice follows Lassie home. Everything has changed, and nobody can say just how. The coach is already contemplating a break in training, but July is nearly here, and the trip to Moscow so close. You don't say much. It is not like you to talk about future events. How could you know the future? You can't accept the idea that everything is lost. Everything will clear up in due time. That's what you must believe. From experience, you know what to expect now. That is why you move with your family to another building which has a sauna, because the phone gives you no peace in your own home. You soon recover quickly your former confidence which was shaken by irritation brought on by the moment's uncertainty caused by the muscle injury. Well, you can always try to catch a fish for your neighbor's cat. The first midsummer celebration at home in 10 years with friends. Only two days at home without running, but several days at half effort. Monday morning in Maylotti Hospital, you feel loose and relaxed. Your injury turns out to be only a cramp and a slightly pulled muscle. Emma's hands fixed it. Let's test a leg on the grassy soccer field. Even the rituals are important now, so over the fence. 5,000 meters on the grass. 50, 100 meters at full speed. Same distance jogging and full speed again. The question is, how well can Lassie endure the speed? After passing the test, he climbs the fence with satisfaction bubbling inside. Next, the Finnish championships in La Penranta. Again, the dissatisfied public silence as Lassie finishes third with a grin. He didn't expect much more on this track anyway. The coach has known one thing for a long time. Lassie's muscles were tighter than expected after the hard Bogota training, and a break in his training took place at the worst possible time. Lassie Viern has qualified again as a member of the Finnish Olympic team. The general public is hopeful again, and so many believe in him. But there is something else in the air. The public is doubting Lassie's chances and saying he's too old. Nothing to show. You can't be trusted. It's a reward trip. You should stay home. Excuses, excuses. You are a discredit to the team. Must an athlete always win if he's a Finn? Aren't four Olympic gold medals enough? Lassie is in good humor, though, sure and calm. What is this all about? Has this man gone crazy? The results of the summer and his outward appearance don't seem to fit. Sometimes at the right moment, an inquiring fan might hear Lassie explain that everything will develop as planned. Everything. And getting nervous doesn't help any. So Lassie doesn't get nervous. The last of five races in Kovala. Nothing seems to have changed. Does anybody notice the effort that has been made to get this far? Your coach knows it. After the competition, you have spent three days at the Viramaki Sports Institute with very demanding training. The days missed with injury now require you to go to extremes. For a full week, your coach pushes harder and harder. 
the time you missed earlier is being chased with all available strength. This is something you have never done before. The last fences between Viren and Moscow, over them. The results of testing remain unclear. Counting the pulse rate gets mixed up and cannot be redone. The end result is the same as before Montreal. Lassie Viren's running career has been fantastic. There's no need to look for anything ordinary about it. The Moscow games were meant to be the crowning of it all. It can be stated with confidence that he came very close to achieving his goal. During the four years, time escaped him into the darkless finish night for three weeks. This was seen in the 10,000 meter race. What happened?
It was not until the Moscow Olympics that La Severin's greatness as a runner was clear. It proved him a supreme tactician during the race. It proved his greatness at the moment of defeat. But above all, it showed that even now the success would have been the result of smartly planned, purposeful, and unyielding work, and absolute love of running. There have never been any secrets. Only the runner, his coach, and running. Secrets were needed and offered by those who were not willing to accept the real La Severin. Why did these runners come here? It is never mentioned in official results, and it only seldom comes through in news commentaries. They represent hard battle, the quest for victory, champions. Every competition produces only one champion and many losers. Besides the challenge, can it be that friendship brought them here? All runners experience hard work, discipline, pain, agony, anticipation, glory, a common thread of understanding, respect, and friendship. Everyone is a winner. Friendships have been won. Life is richer, much richer for the experience. Many times you have been asked, when does all this end? Now you know, not for a long, long time. Running is your life. <laughs>